Hello, hello, hello. This is group eight, and our group is made up of Chelsea Du Chatelier, Lauren Erie, Delia Emina Macapedua, Jessica Fabian, and Stanley Eno. The name of our drug is vinorelbin. As you can see on the right side of this slide, you have the structure of the drug. The brand name of the drug is called Navelbin and it's in the class Vinca Alkalo. Vinca alkaloids are derived from the periwinkle plant Cataranthus roseus. The drug was approved in December of 1994 and there are four major Vinca alkaloids in clinical use. This drug is used in combination with cisplatin with first-line treatment of non-small cell lung cancer. The drug can also be used as a first-line treatment in patients with metastatic non-small cell lung cancer. So on this slide, you can see the original structure of an oral bean, and the green arrow is pointing to the acetyl group that will be taken off once the oral bean goes through deacetylation, and then it is left with the hydroxide group shown in the blue arrow, and the active metabolite is 4-O-deacetyl-vinoral bean. Vinoral bind is a cell cycle specific drug which means that it only works on cells that are actively dividing. It is also known as an antimicrobial tubule agent because of its interaction with tubulin. Vinyl brine prevents the polymerization of tubulin into microtubules, which causes mitosis to stop at metaphase. Once the mitotic spindle becomes dysfunctional, the cell is unable to replicate, and the end result is programmed cell death. The most widely recognized mechanism of resistance of vineurobine is through the MDR and PGP. PGP stands for permeability glycoprotein. It is a type of multidrug resistant protein that binds to vineurobine and extrudes it from the tumor cells. Changes in alpha and beta tubulin, alterations in heat shock response, and disruptions in apoptic signaling are also mechanisms of drug resistance that have been identified in cells with acquired resistance to vineural bind. Cells that have acquired resistance to vineural bind have increased microtubule stability, making them resistant to microtubule disassembly. They also have decreased drug binding. So now we will go over some dosage administration of vineural bean. So it comes as an injection form the strengths are 10 milligrams per one milliliter and 50 milligrams per five milliliters. For administration, you can use it in combination with cisplatin, which is a 25 to 30 milligrams per meter squared as a single intravenous injection weekly. And there's also a single agent where you administer 30 milligrams per meter squared as a single intravenous injection weekly. So for adverse effects of venoral bean, I'm just going to go over some of the more common ones. So for central nervous system, you have fatigue and peripheral neuropathy. For dermatologic, you have alopecia and skin rash. Gastrointestinal, there's nausea, vomiting, constipation, 
and diarrhea. For cardiovascular, you may see localized phlebitis and chest pain. For hematologic and oncologic, you may see myelosuppression, leukopenia, granulocytopenia, neutropenia, anemia, and febrile neutropenia. For hepatic, you may have an increased serum AST, an increased serum bilirubin. And for neuromuscular and skeletal, you may experience some weakness or myalgia. Drug interactions occur with inhibitors of the CYP3A4 enzyme because phenylrelbine is metabolized by the CYP3A4 enzyme. Therefore, when a patient is taking phenylrelbine, he or she should avoid use with medications such as tacrolimus, pimacrolimus, conivaptan, deferoprone, dipirone, and natalizumab. Next, I'm going to discuss the pharmacokinetic features of venorelbine. Venorelbine is distributed throughout the body by binding to human platelets and lymphocytes. It is metabolized mainly by the liver by the CYP3A4 enzyme. Venorelbine has two metabolites. The active metabolite is D-acetylvenorelbine. Then we have venorelbine N-oxide, which is inactive. Toxicities may occur when there is hepatic insufficiency because as you probably already know, the CYP3A4 enzyme is found mainly in the liver. Therefore, if there is liver insufficiency, the drug will not be metabolized and increased levels of the drug in the body will result in the occurrence of more of the adverse effects and toxicities that Jessica explained on the previous slides. This is also why I explained in the previous slide that any drugs that inhibit the CYP3A4 enzyme should not be taken when taking venorelbine because they will prevent the metabolism of venorelbine. You can go back and review those CYP3A4 inhibitor drugs on the previous slide if you need to. The half-life of venorelbine is around 28 to 44 hours. Finally, venorelbine is excreted mainly in the feces with a percentage of excretion of 46%. 18% of the drug is excreted in the urine and the remaining 10 to 12% of the drug is excreted unchanged. Phenorelbine pregnancy risk factor is considered to be in category D. The pregnancy considerations of phenorelbine is it may cause fetal harm if administered during pregnancy. Women of childbearing potential should avoid becoming pregnant during phenorelbine treatment. For breastfeeding considerations, it is not known if phenorelbine is present in breast milk due to the potential for serious adverse reactions in the breastfed infant. Breastfeeding should be discontinued during treatment. 
Some off-label uses of phenorelbin are metastatic breast cancer, cervical cancer, Hodgkin's lymphoma, relapse ovarian cancer, and advanced soft tissue sarcoma. IV dosing of phenorelbin for metastatic breast cancer is 25 mg per meter square every 7 days as a single agent until disease progression or unacceptable toxicity. For cervical cancer, the IV dosing of phenorelbin is 30 mg per meter square days 1 and 8 of a 21-day treatment cycle. For Hodgkin's lymphoma, the IV dosing is 15 mg per meter square post-transplant patients or 20 mg per meter square transplant na naive patients on days 1 and 8 of a 21-day cycle. In combination with gemcitabine and doxorubicin liposomal for two to six cycles. For relapse of ovarian cancer, IV dosing of phenorelbin is 25 mg per meter square every seven days or 30 mg per meter square days one and eight of a 21 day treatment cycle until disease progression or unacceptable toxicity. Lastly, for advanced soft tissue sarcoma, the IV dosing of phenorelbin is 25 mg per meter square days 1 and 8 of a 21-day treatment cycle in combination with gemcitabine until disease progression or unacceptable toxicity. So now we are going to go over some questions pertaining to our presentation on venorovine. What class does venorovine belong to? A. Podophyllotoxins B. Vinca alkaloids C. Camptothecans or D. Taxanes Venorelbine belongs to the class Vinca alkaloids, B. What is the brand name of venorelbine? A. Vimblastine, B. Velban, C. Marquibo, or D. Navelbean. The brand name of venorobean is D. Navelbean. How is venorobean administered? A. Orally. B. Intravenously. C. Through injection. D. Sublingually. Or E. Through inhalation. Venorobine is administered intravenously. Answer choice B. What is venorobine FDA approved for? A. Breast cancer. B. Colorectal cancer. C. Non small cell lung cancer. D. Hodgkin's lymphoma or E, ovarian cancer. Venorobin is FDA approved for C, non-small cell lung cancer. How is venorobin cleared? A, through renal excretion, or B, through hepatic excretion. 
Phenorobine is cleared through B, hepatic excretion. Here's our references. Therefore, this concludes Group 8 presentation on phenorelbine. You may contact us with any questions you may have. Uh, so thank you for listening. Have a good day and good luck on the exam. Group 8 out.